Look how blue they are. The thing you really want. So this is kind of getting back to the colour. Pretty stoked to have these guys. Gee whiz, that's a red fish. Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to Keep Fish Simple. So, welcome to another vlog. I'm not too sure what we did in the last vlog, but in today's vlog, we're gonna be getting a ton of fish and we've already got them. So, I've got all of these fish actually from like a third party seller. So this is the kind of stuff where um, you can't really take the camera along. Anyways, we picked up a bunch of new fish. I'm gonna let you guys all know, we also got tons of shrimp as well. I'm gonna let you all know that these will be available on the website down below. So I decided that I'm gonna get all of these because you can see what we've got going on in a tank like this one here with the angelfish. You can see we've got the angelfish pair up above, but down below, we've got a pair of bristlenose and that's to make a little bit of extra money. So those bristlenose will breed in there. And it's just another way of getting like a cash flow from the tank without having to have like another separate tank it's a good way to use real estate so i decided that we're going to get a bunch of different types of um bristlenose so we've got some long fin lemon um blue eyes so i think these are the long fin lemon blue eyes so we got 20 of these so we'll have 10 available on the website i kind of don't want to sell these so they might be a little bit more pricey because um i'd rather keep them to be honest but they look really really cool we'll take those out and show you guys those in a second these are just the normal blue eye lemons, so you won't be able to see those too well. We only got 10 of them, so we might not have any of them available. We've got some more blue dream shrimp because I've had a ton of success with these and I've had heaps and heaps of people just asking me, hey, can I buy some blue dream shrimp? I wasn't gonna have any available for ages because I had to breed all mine, so I thought I might as well just buy the shrimp. We got some more yellow cherries because I actually haven't had that much success with these guys. They've been a little bit more challenging and we're gonna be changing and fixing up something in this video. So we'll do that, but we've got, I think, quite a few. We've got a top up of the crystals as well. These are all for the website, so you can see them down there. And then finally, We've got some long fin, just common bristlenose and albino bristlenose. I won't be selling these on the website. These are for me to breed. Um, yeah, so I guess we'll start acclimating everything and then we'll show you it all in the tanks. I'm not too sure what we're going to be doing. We've got down here, if you come over to this last tank, this is where we were keeping the yellow cherries. And down here, you can see the yellow cherries. They're doing okay, but they're on this shrimp substrate. And I think the shrimp substrate is not helping them too much. Um, I think it's the water's too soft and uh, they like it to be a little bit harder. We've got, if you come over here, you can see in the crystal tank, the crystals are doing great because they're in their soft water. So they really like that, but these guys want the, they want the hard water. So we're gonna take this shrimp substrate out, take that out and just leave a bare bottom until we add a different type of substrate and see how the shrimp go this time. But um, let's just get straight into acclimating. Um, I'm probably gonna just do a ton of uh, B-roll while we do it and I'll show you guys everything at the end once it's all there so you can see what it's gonna look like if you do decide to buy anything. So yeah, I guess let's just get into it. We've got the lemon blue eyes in here. We've got 15 of them. There's an angel pair in here. This is really dirty because we just took out a bunch of bristle nose in here. Look, these guys are already trying to breed, They're trying to claim that cave. We're gonna take half of these guys and split them between this tank and that tank. So that's five. So the lights are off on the tank that these guys are gonna go into. Um, I've had so much fun with this Blue Dream Shrimp. Like, they've been doing like the best for me. I bought um, I bought 20 originally and I threw them in here and I've already had like five buried females. So I bought a bunch more. Look how blue these guys are. It's like unreal. They're so blue. So these guys are available down below if you are interested in Australia, but um, if you don't take them, <laughs> I'm just gonna breed them. So and then here are the crystals. So they probably just look like blacks as well on the camera, hey? All right, so I'll add them to the tank. Here come the long fin lemons. Little dragons, come on. That was the last one, of course. There we go. Whoa, they are so cool. Oh, these are just the comments. 
Yeah, these don't look as cool as the lemons, hey? Okay, so it's the following morning and we've introduced all the fish and shrimp and we're gonna go have a look at them now. So I just had a look around and they're all doing really, really well. So we'll come over to this back bottom tank and we can have a look here at these yellow cherries. So I decided not to actually change the substrate in here. I did a big test on the water and the water seemed to be perfectly fine. So I'm not too sure what happened before, but now we've got some extra bloodlines. So you can see all those beautiful yellow cherries there eating some shrimp food. So I haven't seen any deaths in here and um, that's a good sign uh, that there's no deaths. And hopefully we don't get any deaths and all these guys settle in really well and start to breed and do really well. So these guys are available on the website down below to the tank with the crystal reds who are also doing really well. No deaths in here. These guys have all done a great job at acclimating and um, getting in here and you can see they're eating some shrimp food as well. The whole bottom now is just littered with these guys, which is really cool to see. Pretty stoked to have these guys um, in big numbers and they'll start breeding very, very soon, I'm sure. And then we'll come over to the Blue Dreams who are doing fantastic. Look at all this blue. Look how blue they are. It's actually insane. These guys look amazing. There's some of the darker ones and then there's some of the really light ones. So those look like, like a velvet, those light ones and then the dark ones are kind of like what a Blue Dream should look like. You can see right there in the middle of the screen, that's a big buried female there, so I'm not too sure whether this is one that I made or whether this one just came in and got buried straight away. That's pretty cool to see. And yeah, these guys are also chowing on some shrimp snow. I might have to take those snails out because you can see the snails are over competing for the shrimp food. So that's not good, but um, these guys should do very, very well. Um, if you're interested in these guys are available down below as well. And then up here, this tank's a little bit more dirty, but these are the um, blue-eyed lemons. These are just the short fins. So these are up here with the black angel pair that I've got. They're a little bit harder to see because they're just that dark. But uh, these guys are a little skittish, um, probably a bit freaked out by those black angels, but they'll get more used to them. They're hiding behind the breeding slate. I don't know whether I'll be selling any of these on the website just yet. I was planning on doing it, but um, I'm a little bit attached to them now and I kind of want to keep them and grow them out a little bit longer before I think about selling them and uh, come to a bit of a, a better decision in my own mind. And then over here in this fry tank, you can see all the fry boxes are up there. There's a few angelfish and stuff that have escaped the fry boxes and grown out. But we've got the longfin common bristlenose here and a long fin albino bristle nose and this black ram in here. Um, these guys are eating their green beans. They're pretty big. Uh, they're gonna be breeding pretty soon, I think. Again, I don't think any of these will be available because I kinda wanna hold on to them and breed them in the future and then show you guys the babies. But uh, they look really, really cool. I'll be trying to breed the albinos with albinos and commons with, our, with the commons, but we'll have to play it by ear. They've all settled in well. I really like the long fin bristle nose. I haven't had long fin bristle nose since I was like a 14 year old. They look like little dragons. It's just really, really cool to see. And then finally, we'll come over to the other fry tank where you can see all these long fin blue eye lemon bristle nose. Man, these guys are cool. I don't know whether these will be available as well. I've, I'm really attached to these. I've got 20 of them in here. I'm hoping that we're gonna have some breeding probably by the end of the year, but we'll have to play it out. They're eating some green beans already and they've settled in well and we haven't had any deaths with any of these fish or shrimp, which is really promising. It means that normally we're not gonna have any deaths from here on. So hopefully they all do really well. I just absolutely love these. It's just mesmerizing just to watch these guys smashing these green beans. So I guess there's all the fish. What we're gonna be doing now is this afternoon, we're actually gonna go get some super red bristle nose. So I wanna grow some of them out as well and try and breed those. I have gotten those in the past and I haven't had much success. And I think it was just due to the stress of moving fish from one fish room to the other. So we're gonna be getting those with Justin. Um, but in the meantime, I'm gonna be doing a bunch of different uh, maintenance things and treatments in here. So I'll be doing a couple of PP treatments on some of these tanks, trying to eradicate flukes and things like that and um, potential parasites in water. I'll show you guys how I do that. I've only just started doing PP treatments and um, yeah, and I'm also gonna be doing a few water changes obviously on the discus and stuff like that. So let's get to work and uh, get these water changes and things done. might be a little bit bad here and that's because I don't want to turn the whole fish room off for this treatment. What we can see up here is my ultimate major fish tank. There's some of the grow outs in here and it's just to keep those random deaths and die offs. Places normally will do this every two weeks. All we've got here is potassium permanganate. You can just get this from your chemist. We've got a bottle here of just water. This doesn't need to be dechlorinated. We're gonna add a tiny bit of the, like literally a tiny bit to this bottle of water. We'll make a mixer and then mix up this aquarium until we get the colour that we want. So there's no specific dosage for this. Don't come to me and ask like how much you should add. I have no clue. Everyone's system's different. I've taken out the sponge filters and all that's in this aquarium is the fish and some air. We're literally gonna add about this much of potassium to mayonnaise to that bottle. What we're gonna do is we're gonna mix it up in this bottle to make the solution. 
You can see right there, here's our solution. And we're gonna add this to the aquarium until we get our desired color. And then we're gonna wait for that to go brown. And then we're gonna do like a 90% water change. So you can see over this side, the aquarium's kind of going a bit pink. And that's the color we want for the whole of the water body. It's important here to not overdose. You want to underdose rather than overdose. It's starting to get that color that we want. Probably have to use a soft bottle. So this is kind of getting to that good pink color. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to leave this in here until it goes brown. And that's kind of the color you want. This is probably underdosing it. I'll flash the photo of the reference color that you want. Okay, so it's been about 20 minutes now and you can see the water's gone like this brown color. So that means it's deactivated now. Pretty much hopefully kills everything in there that's going to pose a threat to the fish. Going to drain the tank to about here and then just fill it up with fresh water. That's basically it. Okay, so we're about to go collect the uh, super red bristle nose, but before we did that, Justin lives near the near the forest and uh, there's a ton of really cool trees around his area and we're gonna go collect a bunch of botanicals and Justin's gonna make a video so you can check it out on his channel. We're collecting all these botanicals for like the shrimp tanks and like the, the other tanks and we're gonna show you which ones are okay and what's this tree? <laughs> <laughs> so this is a flowering gum. You can so, see the flowers on it. Yeah, have a look here. <laughs> so it's usually, um, you can tell by this like big flower, so there's my hand. There's a bee right there too. Oh yeah. That's so cool. And like these pods are like the thing that you really want. The leaves are also jam-packed full of sap, and that's what the tannin is. You can see, this one's obviously been ridden over by a car, and you can see how much stuff is in there. Like, that would just leach out into the water. That'd be so good for your aquarium. Yeah. Because this would have a bunch of antibacterials and antifungals, and exactly. once it starts biodegrading too, the shrimp is just going to feast on that. Yeah. And um, so we're going to collect a bunch of it. Yep. And so this is like a part of the same family as like Melaleuca. So Melaleuca is the active ingredient in Melafix, which is a very popular yeah, yeah. like thing. That we, we use it a use. lot. Justin yeah. uses it a lot more than I do. But, so uh, it's, that, it's that eucalyptus oil that's antibacterial, antifungal. So, really so can we take, these are still green, so we can't take those. They're still green, but we can actually, we can grab the ones on the floor. Oh, yep. These are all very dry. Yeah. And nut. And even these. Oh, you can see right here, like where the shrimp would go in. Yep breed in there and look at the size of these leaves and you can also use these leaves yeah look how big they are That's... so these these leaves are okay yeah we, we keep going to people's houses and they keep getting weirded out they're like why are these people coming and collecting our leaves <laughs> and the dogs come out and start barking and ruin the video but it's all right doing the council favor by picking up all the dead stuff exactly one thing though is you can see the difference here you can see a green leaf yeah this has probably been taken off by a cockatoo or something and even better if you can find a branch still attached to the tree that has a, a dead leaf on it yeah because it means that the tree's left up all the like, the juice in it that you don't want basically yeah, yeah that's not good for fish because we just want the oils so we'll keep collecting these and go to the next tree and show you guys what we're doing all right so the second tree is our banana tree <laughs> so you can see right here we're going to collect all these fronds that are dead and hanging off of the banana tree they release a lot of acid yeah. but they don't release any like dark tannin yeah so we'll collect some of these this is our next location it's going to be a little bit loud it's right next to the motorway here this is a guava tree yeah. So we're going to collect these leaves down here. These are really, really good for the shrimp, these guava leaves. Yeah. So they look a little bit like mulberry leaves. Yeah, so they like, the shrimp actually will just eat these. We're super lucky to have found this tree. Um, so yeah, you can use guava, guava leaves as well. And lastly, we're getting um, some mulberry leaves. So these guys are from this tree up here. This is a mulberry tree. And uh, we're collecting all the fallen leaves. The shrimp really like these leaves. They biodegrade within like a day. So that's a little bit annoying, yeah. but you can just constantly feed them if you get like there's heaps of them along here. So we'll collect a bunch of these, very similar to the, what I call the guavas that we just got. So we got back um, with our super reds now. So for the same reasons as before, I didn't really want to go and shove a camera in that person's face. So we've got them here. I'm gonna put them in this bag and we're gonna drip acclimate them. We're gonna introduce them to this fry tank with all the uh, long fin, just common bristle nose and the albino bristle nose as well. We'll just grow them out and then once they get to breeding size or what we suspect or when they're big, we can move them and we can pair them off and um, yeah. They probably just look black. Do they look red? Yeah, they do. Oh, they look really red. Nice. So we'll start drip acclimating these and yeah. Get all these guys out as well. Challenge, you gotta get them and then put them on. <laughs> yeah, there's one that looks nice and red. Gee whiz, that's a red fish. I mean, for a bristle nose, man, wow. Yeah, compared to that. Yeah. Right, so it's now the next day and you can see these super red bristle nose in here. So we've got 10 of them in here. You can see a few right there in the middle of the screen. They look pretty red. I mean, they're on a light substrate. Well, there's no substrate in here, which kind of makes them not as deep and red in color. 
but they've been eating some of these green beans which the longfin albinos and longfin commas are just absolutely demolishing. Um, you can see there's another one up the back there and there's one over here. So there's going to be plenty of videos on these guys. Um, so if you're interested, please consider subscribing. But uh, I guess that's going to wrap this video up. So thank you guys so much for watching it. I really do appreciate it and I'll see you guys in the next one.